Hello, everyone. Uh, so, I am Elias Verev, and uh, I come from OpenStreetMap. Uh, most of you know what OpenStreetMap is. It's uh, open map, uh, which everyone can uh, paint. And OpenStreetMap has one issue. Well, not exactly one. It has millions of problems. But this one comes uh, from uh, the nature of the project. It's uh, the biggest one. Uh, OpenStreetMap is open data. And to make open data, you have to rely on even opener data, like public domain level of open. And uh, the sources for OpenStreetMap is very hard to find because of this, because there is uh, very few sources which are open enough for OpenStreetMap. And this uh, hindered the development of OSM for a very long time in the start. Because first, uh, cities were dr drawn using only Landsat imagery, which is very crude, like 15 meters per pixel, and uh, manually collected GPS traces, which are also not great, but uh, you can see that at least they make a road network you can trace. GPS traces are still uh, considered the main source for OpenStreetMap. Uh, they are featured very prominently on the website. Uh, there's even a link for them. People are still uploading the, uh, them. Not many, just 100 a day or so, but still. And people are tracing over GPX. Their primary source, which means uh, all other source sources are aligned to GPS traces. But of course, many years have passed, and thanks to many big companies, we now have a lot more uh, detailed sources, like detailed imagery for all the world, thanks to S3, Mapbox, uh, Digital Globe, and Bing, of course. Uh, we have uh, Street View, thanks not to Google, but to Mapillary, uh, the open alternative. And we have a lot of vector data, like building footprints for all of the United States, thanks to Microsoft, uh, road net for, for Netherlands, thanks to AMD, and uh, a lot of local sources for data. So there are so many sources that uh, you basically can draw anywhere on the map. But of course, these sources have issues as well. And the main issue is that uh, they are not always recent. Like this imagery was taken four years ago but it doesn't actually say so on the imagery itself. You have to know where to look. The same for Street View. You may not notice it, but uh, Street View images can be taken like two years ago. The same for vector data, the same for even GPS traces. People are still tracing the map from traces uploaded 10 years ago. So. OpenStreetMap is considered to be a very recent, very quality map, but in fact, we all, editors of OpenStreetMap, are using sources that are very old. We are making the map of uh, yesterday, figuratively, <laughs> which means years, uh, half a year, a year ago. And that is uh, the main issue with sources in OpenStreetMap. So a bit about myself, I work in a company called Juno. This is a taxi service like Uber, but works only in New York. If you're in New York, try using it. It's very generous to drivers. And on my job, I work with vast amounts of data collected from all the rides, from all parts of infrastructure. Uh, for example, I uh, work with all right data collected, like uh, where people get on the car, get, uh, get dropped off, uh, all the timestamps, locations, uh, all the toll information, uh, speeds, and so on. So, and uh, of course, uh, road GPX traces from the rides. Uh, they look like this. Uh, uh, they're, of course, raw, and in uh, build-up areas, you might know that GPX si signal 
tends to drift off quite a lot, especially in areas like Manhattan with very high buildings. So how do you work with it? How do you analyze it uh, and make any calculations? Uh, there is a process for that, and uh, Peter may have talked about it in his graph proper presentation. Uh, it's called map matching. You basically take every point of the trace and find the road segment uh, that uh, uh, was most likely traveled. Uh, and uh, it's not always nearest road segment. As you can see, uh, track drift offs quite significantly. Uh, but using complex processes involving Markov chains, predictions, and stuff like that, uh, you finally get uh, road segments uh, which you can uh, do your work with. Uh, these uh, algorithms uh, are pretty well implemented in open source decisions. There is OSRM which we, which we use. Uh, I believe GraphHopper also can do it. Uh, so now we have road segments. That's uh, theory. So when I came to Juno, uh, as you know, I come from OpenStreetMap, and I have been thinking, how can I help my project? What can I do to improve OpenStreetMap itself working at Juno? I cannot, of course, publish uh, raw GPS traces for people to trace because that will be a breach of privacy and corporate stuff. Uh, but... Uh, Turns out uh, one of my colleagues have already started working on a very uh, interesting thing. He basically took all the traces we had for a day, all 50,000 of them. I really hope we'll, we'll have 100,000 <laughs> in a year. Uh, he matched them to OpenStreetMap road network, all 50,000, and started looking for animal anomalies. Anomalies <laughs> yeah. uh, for unexpected loops, for uh, places where matched roads diverge from a uh, road track, because these mean that there is an error in OpenStreetMap, that there is some one way road uh, that's painted uh, uh, tagged incorrectly, that there is some segment missing, and so on. And uh, I took over the project and made it uh, more production ready. It looks like this. So you can see that uh, traces from our taxi drivers uh, help find uh, quite a lot of issues in OpenStreetMap. Like here, uh, red trace traces the road trace from the car, and the blue one is matched to OpenStreetMap. And you can see that uh, there is probably some small segment in OSM that's marked one way incorrectly. So what I did is basically sped it up. Now it processes like a million of writes in under five hours. Uh, I made a nice uh, user interface so I can immediately see errors on the map and a lot of other stuff. And it's uh, containerized, so it runs every day, so every morning I start with fixing the most prominent errors in OpenStreetMap. There are, uh, these are other examples of uh, uh, such errors, like unconnected segments and stuff. So there was there around 2% of writes matched incorrectly when I started. Now it's like 1 in 200, which is uh, quite great, but not perfect. Uh, some rights, uh, some false positives come from, for example, sudden drift of GPS signal, which obviously cannot match to anything, uh, or when taxi drivers make sudden U-turn to turn left when, where it's forbidden to. <laughs> but mostly it's okay. W one time I start my morning with finding that uh, more than 100 rights were matched incorrectly in West Manhattan, uh, because somebody has reversed a couple of streets, one-way streets. So I started investigating it because uh, you, you don't just correct it without understanding what happened. So I opened uh, uh, satellite imagery. So the street was heading that, uh, that way, and people reversed it to face that way. And you can see that cars are uh, stationed 
uh, in uh, the new way, the way that has been fixed. And uh, I open Google Street View, and oh, again, it looks like it's one-way street headed westward, so the edit must be right. But uh, I still uh, have 100 writes that tell otherwise, that it must be an error. And when the street was headed eastward, it was all okay. So what happened? I started Googling, and it turns out that four months ago, uh, the Department of Transport indeed reversed the direction of the street. But it was just four months ago, and uh, uh, all the sources we have, like satellite imagery, like, uh, okay, uh, like uh, street view, they don't reflect it, because satellite imagery uh, was taken like half a year ago, and Street View is from 2017. I wrote about it to OSM editor, who made the change, asking them to be more careful. And from the answer, uh, I got two things. First, uh, well, I was answered by a Lyft employee. Lyft is another taxi service. And uh, she basically said that she's a part of OSM mapping team, and uh, uh, she didn't have another source. So, which means that Lyft, well, as well as Uber, as well as any big company that uses geospatial data, they use OpenStreetMap, that's for sure. We know that everyone uses OpenStreetMap at this moment. But what's more important, they have dedicated mapping team, a group of people who uh, fixes errors on OpenStreetMap, which they can find. And the second thing is they don't have recent sources, working at Lyft and even bigger company than ours. And that is, again, the issue with sources for OpenStreetMap. So being a person involved in the open project, I started thinking, how can I uh, invent, how can I give more better sources? Because I found the error while, while they didn't. So there is GPX traces. We've got uh, every minute we get like a dozen new rides, or a dozen new road GPX traces for the city, but we can share them. So how does it happen in OpenStreetMap? Actually, in OpenStreetMap, nobody downloads GPX files anymore. Uh, well, nobody uploads them, but that's another thing. Uh, because working with GPX is very hard. It's a complex format. It takes a lot of memory. And where, when there is a lot of writes, it's very hard to trace over GPX traces. So instead, people just add a GPX tiles layer. It's all the same traces, but uh, rendered in raster tiles. Uh, the color means uh, direction of travel. So the blue one is uh, traveling to the east, and red is to the west. So you can immediately see uh, one-way streets and two-way streets, and where can you go? So I uh, looked at the GPX style layer for Manhattan, and it was abysmal. It's uh, just a couple wiggly lines in Manhattan, where there's a lot of people living. <laughs> and working. So obviously this couldn't be the source for lift mappers or for any mappers. Well, so what I did was took the source code for, that produces these tiles, because as everything else in OpenStreetMap, it's open source, and uh, applied them to uh, our GPX traces. Come on. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, what I got. It's uh, traces just for one day uh, for the area around uh, the street in question. Uh, and uh, you, you can see that there are s some one-way streets. You can learn their direction and so on. So it looks pretty useful, much better than traces in OpenStreetMap. And the important thing is uh, these are not raw data, not GPX traces. They have no metadata. And which means this is sufficiently anonymized for publishing. So uh, we have 
now we have a daily built Docker container with tiles for rides which happened yesterday. It's just one day of travels in the taxi service. So this container is built daily. It's published internally at the moment and re ready to be published elsewhere. And so what's more important, uh, that uh, we've got permission to publish it uh, for the public. Uh, there are some DevOps issues, but uh, in a week or two, it will be accessible to any OpenStreetMap editor. And with that, it will become uh, the most recent source in OpenStreetMap ever. <laughs> it, it's only for New York, sadly. Uh, we operate only in... Uh, in New York and in New Jersey soon. Uh, but uh, even then, it's basically, uh, you can see where cars uh, drive the day before today, like yesterday or the day before that. So uh, if a road is closed, then you will notice it on this map uh, the next day. So it is very recent. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you may believe that uh, after publishing this, there will be no more errors in New York City. Of course, that's not correct, because publishing source doesn't mean you instantly get a re ready-made map. If that was the case, then uh, since we have detailed satellite imagery for most of the planet, we would have the most detailed map for the entire planet. And that is, of course, not correct. There are still a lot of places uh, which have roads and buildings, but uh, virtually no map data. So how do you make people, make mappers, uh, use the source that you give them? Uh, the common answer is you take this big task and split it in steps. Uh, the thing that uh, quality assurance tools uh, usually do. Uh, they uh, give you a list of errors and you can fix them one by one. Uh, and we have such tool, it's called MapRoulette. Uh, in here, for example, it uh, shows you a segment of uh, the street and asks you, ask you to specify how many lanes it have, has. You can see the number of lanes from satellite imagery. So all you have to do is open editor, enter a number, and uh, hit upload. And then it gives you another, the next task, the next road segment, and the next one. So a couple hours pass, and you have made a substantial contribution to OpenStreetMap. So what I'm doing now at my, at my job uh, is uh, linking graph validator with uh, MapRoulette, so people in New York or in the United States in general can go and fix the remaining errors in the road network. Uh, it's, uh, it work, um, it turned out a bit more complex than I expected because I had to fix MapRoulette as well. Uh, there are pull requests still going. Uh, but uh, it will be done, I hope, in a week or two. So, and when I finish it, uh, I may explore other ideas because I still have this large uh, pile of GPX traces which I can analyze uh, how, however I want. So what else can we get from it? Uh, we can validate uh, highway classification, like uh, confirm that uh, the road that is very prominent on the map has indeed uh, a lot of rides going over it. Uh, we can find uh, one-way streets uh, that are incorrectly mapped as two-way because uh, we don't validate for that currently. Uh, missing turn restrictions, uh, if you see 100 cars turning right at the intersection, the only right, then uh, it's most likely you cannot turn left there. And speed limits, although I wouldn't trust taxi drivers to obey speed limits. <laughs> If you have any other ideas, I'm open. <laughs> so. so what is this all about? Uh, when a company, corporation does something, you can, 
can believe uh, they will follow through. They have the money, they have resources, they have people that uh, oversee the projects. So they are fine with their projects. But open projects, they rely only on you, which means uh, if you don't think about your open projects, then nobody will. Uh, only people in the community are responsible for open projects, uh, so you cannot expect somebody else will do it for you. Like uh, when I left MapsMe to work on Juna, I expected uh, to stop contributing to OpenStreetMap or not to contribute as much. But even on the new job, I uh, always remember that I come from OpenStreetMap and the needs of my project are still not first, but second in line. And that's what helped me to find new ways of helping OpenStreetMap. So uh, that's also on uh, the most of you. If you work for a company or for go government, uh, see what you can help uh, with opening. Maybe you can help the company open some source code that's uh, not crucial for your project or, for, or some geodata because we have too few geodata right now to make a pretty good map. And if you don't work for such company, then find a friend <laughs> who does. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you. We have some time for questions. Yeah. Here in Belgium, taxis can sometimes go against the flow of one-way traffic like buses. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how that is done in New York, but uh, then you get the wrong information if it's only applied to taxis. Oh, regarding restrictions, uh, there are so many options you can find in the wild, especially in New York, like turn restrictions that uh, don't work the whole day. You, you, you see on the street view that uh, there is a clear restriction, you can turn left, and in OpenStreetMap you also can turn left. But then you zoom in and you see that uh, this restrictions, restriction applies only for working hours. So you have to fix OpenStreetMap to uh, reflect that. So uh, the restriction, the signage in the real world is very com complex. So you have to learn uh, the many interesting ways uh, people in OpenStreetMap try to re reflect that in their tagging. Well, opposite cam uh, indeed uh, did a great thing with uh, improving the GPS signal because uh, uh, when you have only a GPS receiver or your phone, then uh, the device doesn't have much to work with. It just uh, have to rely on signal from uh, satellites. Uh, and what opposite cam did was uh, to allow to plug into cars. Uh, system to get information about uh, its speed and the angle the wheels are turned to improve the GPS signal using this information. So it obviously works better in areas like Manhattan and when something is obstructing the satellites. But of course there is a drawback why people are not using it on a daily basis because you have to have a device that plugs into your uh, car bus uh, and you have to pair it with the phone, and it, uh, in my case, it didn't work. I couldn't just pair it <laughs> with, with the receiver. Uh, and if everything else works, uh, then uh, again, uh, it uh, contacts the phone, connects the phone via Bluetooth, and Bluetooth uh, often uh, just drops connection. But if everything else works, then yes, OpenStreetCam uh, can help uh, get a better uh, uh, signal. But uh, I work in a taxi company, and we have 
several thousand drivers and we can't distribute the same thing <laughs> to them. It's, uh, it was hard enough to make them use the single uh, phone system, <laughs> but uh, giving extra things, this just won't work. Right, so the question was, uh, can I use my phone t uh, as a dash cam and then use the dash cam footage to improve the map? Uh, yes, of course, <laughs> but uh, not the way uh, professional companies doing it. We have a mapillary, uh, which is uh, a street view that you can collect yourself. Basically, use your uh, phone as a dash cam and it will make uh, photos and th send them to the server. Uh, and then you can use that f footage uh, to manually add things it uh, have seen to the map. Uh, there are ongoing attempts to streamline the process, like um, Richard Fairhurst is working on an editor uh, that uh, basically uh, uh, gives you a photo from a pillory. You click on the photo, uh, like uh, on the shop or on the sign, and it automatically places markers on the map and allows you to ex describe what you have clicked on. But it's still in early stages, so uh, I expect in a year or two it will be easier to process such uh, dash cam imagery. Okay, one last question. One. Yes. Yeah. Uh, why is there so little mapillary in uh, New York? I have no idea. Maybe we should look at OpenStreetCam data. <laughs> but yeah, in New York, we often have to rely on Google Street View to cross-check uh, errors because uh, there is very little in my pillar, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.